Well, as promised, here's the schematics to my version 2.0 supercapacitor uh, car battery. And uh, I've made a couple changes from the original video uh, that I showed you guys, uh, which led to uh, some really useful improvements. Uh, first is uh, I upgraded to uh, 12 capacitors uh, instead of 6. And the reason I did that is because I wanted more of a... Uh, more cranky amps in case the card needed to turn over longer. Um, the other thing I did is I added an extra battery and the reason I did that is because when the uh, when the car battery would drain down the low voltage disconnect would cut off the battery to protect the battery from overdrain and it would do that at uh, about 11 volts. The problem is by the time the battery has gotten that low um, the amperage that it can put out is kind of low and it kind of took a while to recharge the capacitors to crank the car again. So by having the second battery, uh, which is, you know, charged with a diode, uh, until you flip that, you know, switch, uh, say, you know, you leave your dome light on and you drain, uh, drain your battery down and your low voltage disconnects your battery. Uh, you can flip the switch, switch it over to this battery, and it'll recharge these capacitors in about three seconds. And then you just, boom, start your car up, and uh, you flip your switch back over to this battery, and you just drive on your merry way, and your engine just recharges your batteries. I also put a solar panel in the back window of my car. Uh, the reason I chose the back window is because uh, the car it's not in my the view of my driving and um, it was really super easy uh, to run those wires behind the seat I didn't have to drill through a firewall I didn't have to cut anything I just ran the wires through the back seat and there's a 12 volt line coming straight from the battery uh, that pe that powers your uh, trunk light because uh, that'll work without the key being you know being on so I didn't have to run any um, special line, you know, uh, to the to the battery box. All I had to do was tap into that line uh, right there into the trunk. So uh, that made for an easy place to tie in uh, the uh, uh, solar panel into the into the battery. So uh, the other thing that I just want to make note is that. Uh, uh, the resistor here. I have 1 to 0 0.01 ohm and that's something that you're going to have to decide. I chose to go with a 1 ohm and the reason I did that is because um, I want this to last a really really long time. And manufacturer recommendation for lead acid batteries is typically uh, they don't want you pulling more than twice the amp hour uh, rating of the battery at any one time. Uh, if you do that, then the uh, lifespan of your battery drops dramatically off. So, you know, some of you might, you know, tie your battery directly to your capacitors uh, without going through, um, you know, any protective circuitry. Uh, but that will, you know, dramatically uh, uh, lower your battery life because uh, your battery will maintain uh, its voltage um, as, as the car cranks, however, your capacitor voltage is going to drop. And what that's going to do is that's going to shift uh, the, amp out, the amp drain over to the battery more as the voltage drops on these capacitors until the voltage crashes on that uh, battery. And it's kind of like shorting your battery. And that'll dramatically uh, lower its lifespan. So uh, I got the uh, resistor here, and the resistor, when the when the engine's cranking, that resistor limits the uh, the power draw. With one amp, I can power my uh, radio. It's just a plain car radio. If you got like, you know, a super, you know, 500 watt radio, it's not going to do it. But you know, just a regular car radio or the internal lights, you know, the the one ohm is is fine. Um, however, it won't run the headlights. Uh, they draw too many amps and that will start to, to lower the capacitor. So uh, in that case, you might want like say a point, uh, 0.1 ohm, but then you're going to, if you make that choice, you're going to be drawing more off your battery uh, when the engine cranks. So 
my choice was I went with a one ohm, but you know you can choose your choose your own. So, uh, and basically uh, the design is otherwise the same. Uh, switch in the middle, it's just capacitors. Uh, otherwise, it's switched to this battery with the low voltage disconnect. So if the uh, say something happens and uh, you know you leave something on in the car. Your battery isn't harmed. Your low voltage disconnect uh, uh, protects you. When you start your car, your resistor uh, protects you uh, from drawing too much. However, when your car is running, uh, the diode basically lets you bypass the resistor and charge your battery at, at full normal amperage. I use uh, 10 amp uh, shockies. And uh, secondary battery you can flip to if this one's low, and that will charge your capacitors in about uh, three seconds. Uh, which is which is really good. So you have a dead battery, you flip your switch, and you can start your car with your reserve power. And then you just flip it back and it's charging both your batteries. This switch down here lets you check uh, um, your capacitor voltage or your battery voltage. So I hope this is useful. Um, I've been running this now for um, uh, a good uh, couple of months now and uh, it's been working perfectly um, <clears throat> particularly the volt the uh, solar panel uh, and it's not a real big one it's like a little seven watt one off of Amazon uh, but when I when I get in the car and I start it, it's like you know sitting sitting right there at you know plus 12 volts you know all the time so that was that was a nice addition so uh, I hope uh, I hope you find this uh, useful. And uh, this wasn't the cheapest, you know, way to go. You know, you can just get a regular battery. But uh, I had two. When I made this, I had two decisions that I I wanted to achieve. One, I just I wanted to do this for fun to see if I could do it. And uh, number two is uh, I wanted to create a battery that was going to last a long, long time. So. Uh, and uh you know these are i think about seven bucks a piece so uh, they're not that expensive to replace and uh, maybe in the uh, future i might replace them with uh, um, uh, nickel metal iron batteries but uh, in the meantime these are cheap and easy to come by and uh, they'll last a good long time so uh, i hope uh, you found this useful and if uh, you manage to make something or a variant on this, uh, let me know because I'd like to hear about it. Okay, bye-bye.